lovelies! I hope you're all well. So today we're going to look at stenciling again. We're going to use the Mylar material we used in our previous video. If you didn't see the previous video, I will link to it in the description below. But we're actually going to look at how you can turn SVGs or images into reusable stencils. So we looked at text in the previous video, today we're going to look at images. Now you do need to be quite selective in the images or the SVGs that you're going to use. It will not work with all of them. Uh, some of them are just far too detailed and it's just too much work in my opinion to do it. But there are a lot that you can do it with. So these are actually two examples. This one's just going to take a few little rectangles to slice out and it will be fine. This one is pretty much done for us. We just need to put some rectangles and slice out in the love and I also want to change the fall in as well. Both of these are from a design bundles bundle. Hide this one first and we're going to work on this one. Now I've already come in and got the size how I want it and then I'm just going to zoom in and this is how I do it I size it first and then I zoom in so I keep the size how it should be I'm then going to get a shape just a square I'm going to unlock it and I'm going to bring it in and I want it to be quite thin not super thin but thin enough there's perfect and then I'm going to lock it back up and I'm going to duplicate it. Now I will always keep the width the same throughout the whole image, but the length will change depending on you know where it needs to go. So I'm just going to ungroup it all first and I want to move the fall in out the way and we're just going to grab our text. Now I've just gone for agency FB but that gap is just, it's too much that line gap so we're just going to come up to line space and start decreasing it and then I just want to unlock it, I just want to transform it slightly. I'm then going to get one of my lines, I'm just going to unlock it and I'm going to reduce the length and then lock it back up. I'm going to bring it in and I'm just going to sit it so it sits where my two lines meet on my A. I'm then going to highlight and I'm going to slice. And when we pull it away, you'll see there is a gap there. So that actually will allow us to keep the middle part of our A, which is exactly what we want. So now we need to work on our love. We don't have an awful lot of work to do, but there's a little bit of work to do. So we're just going to bring one of them over. Let's do the V first. So I just want to move that to arrange and move to back so we can see our line better. So when I'm working with a word like this, I literally don't do anything apart from place all my kind of, I don't know what to call them, my slice lines. I place all my slice lines first, so that's what I'm going to do. So once I've got all my slice pieces sorted, I'm just going to click on my love and I'm going to hide it. I'm then going to come in and I'm going to highlight all my slice pieces and I'm going to weld them together. The reason I do this is because you can only slice one thing at a time. So to avoid that, if you weld all your pieces and then bring back your love, we can then highlight everything and we can actually slice all in one go, which actually makes a lot less work for us. So once it's all the way you want it, we're then going to highlight and we're just going to weld it all together so it becomes one complete file. We're then going to go to shapes and get a square. So I want my stencil to be 8 by 8 so I'm just going to press 8 and then enter. I'm then going to bring my stencil in or my image, I'm going to highlight I'm going to align to center and then I'm going to slice. And I've then got myself a stencil which I can use time and time again. 
So I've got my second image here. I've already sized it up and I just want to come straight in and weld it as one. There's not a huge amount of work to do here. There's a little bit of work in the heart. Uh, we need to slice out all our middle pieces. Uh, not too many around there, but in the heart there's quite a few bits. So we're just going to zoom in because we've already got our size. We're going to grab a square. Now before I start placing them, I just want to change the colour so it's slightly lighter and I also want to arrange and move to back so it just make it easier for me when I'm coming in and placing all my lines. Now as I say, you do need to manoeuvre them slightly and you will need to have a play and work out what works best for you. I always try and do it on the edges, but you can do it anywhere. I mean, it's your stencil. You put everything where you want to put it. So again, I'm just going to go through and start placing all my lines where I want. So once I've placed all my slice lines, I'm going to hide my image. I'm going to come in and I'm going to highlight them all and then weld them so they become one. I can then bring my image back, again, highlight, and I'm going to slice, and just slice everything out at once. Again, I want to grab a square, and I'm going to make it 8 by 8 I'm going to highlight both of them, and align and centre, and then I'm going to slice. So then we've actually got two really great stencils. So I think I'm going to use this one today, so I'm just going to hide this one. I'm using my Maker today, but if you're using your Air, just set your dial to custom and then you can follow the steps from here. Now I did show you how to create your own custom setting in the previous video on stencils, but I'll show you again just because it's quick and easy. So we do need to make our own setting. Now I'm using 125 micron A4 Mylar sheets. And I did have to do lots of experimenting and I actually bought lots of different types of mylar and I find that the 125 is the best to work with. Uh, I will put the link in the description below which also has a 10% code off. If you buy other kind of suppliers or you know I can't think of the word but if you get another brand for example you will need to do your own test cuts so we're going to go to browse all materials we're going to go to material settings we're going to scroll all the way down we're going to add new material we're going to name it I've just named it Mylar A4 125 micron use and save We've then got a variety of options, so I changed my blade first and I actually changed it to the deep point blade simply because the angle of rotation on the deep point blade is a lot greater than the fine point blade and I just think it handles the mylar better, so we're going to use deep point blade. I'm going to change my multi-cut to two times and I'm going to increase my pressure to 300. I'm then going to save it. Once it's saved I can close it and we're just going to let the materials reset. We can then go back into browse all materials. We're going to go down to my materials and then we can click on our setting and press done. And then we can go and get it all set up.
So you can see that my stencil is now all cut out and I've also got a wooden block here. This is from Made By Tree. As always, I'll put the descriptions in the links below. Or I'll put the links in the description below, that should say. They come either plain or waxed. This one is waxed. Once again, we're using the Nouveau embellishment mousses just because they're fun to work with. And we are using these beauties. So these are eye zinc, e zinc, e zinc. You know what I'm like, I'm terrible at pronouncing things. I am in love with these. These are diamond paints. Oh my goodness. They are so versatile. So they go on paper, card, glass. We're gonna put them on the wood. They dry, they're fantastic. The other thing that they go on is fabric. They do not need heat treating and they wash up to 40 degrees Celsius. I am in love with these. I've only got these three colors. I've actually just put in an order for all the colors because I will be using these a lot in the run up to Christmas. So I need to adhere my stencil to my wood block. So I'm gonna turn it over. And I've got some Crafters Companion Stick and Spray. This is brilliant for working with Myla stencils. It is repositional, which is great. It does stick, but it wears off. So you can just keep using it, keep taking it off. You can respray. It's absolutely brilliant, this stuff. So we're going to cover the whole back of our stencil with the Stick and Spray. And you want to leave it to dry for about 30 seconds. We're then going to come in and place it onto our block. And if you're unhappy with the placement, just lift it straight back up. Once you are happy with the placement, go in with your fabric brayer or your scraper and just give it a roll or a scrape and make sure that it is nice and adhered to your surface. I'm going to put it onto the back of a palette knife and I'm just going to come in and spread it onto my stencil. And you can pick up the excess, which is something I really like. And the other thing about it is you can choose how thick or how thin you want your paint layer to be. And if you're working with small fiddly bits, you can just go in with your finger and do it that way as well. I mean, you can place it on there however you want to. dry for about 10 to 15 minutes you don't want it completely dry you still do want a little bit of wetness about it and we're just going to come in and start peeling our stencil away if need be you can use your weeding tool to help you 